Hey everyone, how's it going? Daniel here. Today we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, which retails for $1,000. So let's go ahead and open this right away. I'm just eager to get into it and check out, especially this color that I got here, which is a gray color, which not enough phones are made gray. And uh, yeah, that's really nice, actually. This is what I was really hoping for, this kind of smoked out gray finish, which just looks really, really nice. It's nice and kind of toned down. It kind of looks like the background here, but a lot brighter. Of course, we have this black top, which is all glass. And right here, there is a screen. Visually, this looks very, very nice. Physically, kind of just holding it in the hand here, it definitely feels much more sturdy compared to the previous generation flip phones. It just feels like an actual phone here while it's open. Yeah, and I really, really, really do like that. And I love that color. I actually really, really recommend this color. Here you can just see it compared to my 14 Pro Graphite and then this one here in the deep purple. You can kind of just see how that looks. And then size wise, this thing is actually pretty small or I, I guess not small. It's a pretty large phone when you open it because this is the Pro Max right here. Let's put it this way so you can kind of compare. So it's, you can see it's very, very tall. It's even taller than the Pro Max and just a little bit thinner, which makes it easier to hold in one hand and actually use it in one hand once you open it, which is really, really nice. And here compared to just a normal 14 Pro, you can see it's very similar width, but then just the height quite a bit taller. So it's a pretty good form factor. The fact that you have a taller screen, that means you can read a lot more things on your screen when you're using it. And then of course, close it up and uh, put that in your pocket, which of course, when you put it in your pocket, it's gonna be quite thick in comparison to your average phone. There you can see it almost feels like it's almost twice as thick as a 14 Pro right here, but not quite. Still, it does give you some benefits, right? It'll fit in pockets that a usual phone wouldn't fit, but let's go ahead and boot it up here. And uh, I'm gonna just set it up and everything so that we can get into this thing and try it out. All right, so I've gone ahead and set it up, backed up my stuff from the Z Flip 4 from last year. And real quick, let's just see what else is in the box so you can see that. As usual, not very much nowadays anymore. We do have a SIM eject tool and then just a USB-C to USB-C to charge it and a quick start guide. And that's gonna do it in there, unfortunately. I wish that phones came with more stuff, maybe a case or something, but I guess the days of that are pretty much over. Now I did play around a little bit while setting it up and visually the screen is very nice and bright. The contrast is fantastic. Of course, the main thing here is that cover display. So if we double tap here, we can turn it on and you can see it there, we have the time. You can actually go ahead and pinch out here and you kind of have some widgets, kind of a whole new home interface here for when the phone is closed. You can add things, you can even add a widget here, which you can kind of download through good luck on the Samsung app store and uh, install that. And then it lets you actually open up apps here on the front screen. Only issue I've noticed that I have had apps crash on here quite often, and it's not technically a supported feature by Samsung, at least not yet, but I hope it is in the future. So if we go ahead here and that you can see right there, good luck launcher, you can add any apps you want to that. And then, you can just go ahead and open them. So for example, something like TikTok, it's not gonna work super well because of course it's very tiny, everything's crunched up. But yeah, it does work really, really well if you, you know, what you wanna do is just kind of watch them, especially since if you have this closed, you can actually use up much less battery since of course it's a smaller display. But here we can just go back home, drag up. Let's go back to that launcher and launch something else like chess, which I thought was a pretty interesting thing to play on here. So let's go ahead here and play the computer. And you can kind of see there, you can basically play chess without an issue. And uh, oh, we're in check here. And you can just kind of keep it closed, use one hand while you're waiting for something or something. And it doesn't really look like you're completely on your phone when you're like this. So if you see me from a distance, I'm kind of like this. You're like, what is he doing? Is he just checking the time or something? Well, I'm playing chess while it's closed. So it's definitely really, really kind of a neat thing to have. Where it really plays a part is when you want to take pictures and stuff because it's really great to just kind of have the phone there, double click that, take a picture, put it away. And it's also very fun and inviting when you do it with selfies with people and stuff. Like people want to take a picture because it's just very fun. And um, 
it's just different, you know, compared to the usual things we've gotten over the past decades since the previous generation of flip phones. But you can see that there you have the viewfinder. You can actually zoom out there for the wide angle lens and zoom back in or even zoom extra in there. There we go. We're on the normal lens right here. If you tap up here, you get some more options. So you can have full one to one, nine by 16, three by four, quite a few options there and um, natural or warm tone for the pictures. Let's go back here. Of course, a timer. And if we swipe to the right, we can have the video here, right here. You can change full HD 60 or full HD 30, 16 by nine. And then the auto framing, which is a cool feature that keeps you in frame when you move around as you've seen on other devices. So if you like that, but I don't like those things usually because they'll lower the actual resolution of the video, but you do have it if that's something you're interested in. If you give this to someone else that's not good at framing, well then you're gonna be framed the whole time basically because of it. And then we have super steady as well. Now here to the left, you can also activate portrait mode, which works pretty well. I have noticed that the pictures are substantially better than the Z Flip 4 and last year's versions. It does have a new processor in there, which is processing the images, even though it's the same lenses as last year, basically. But everything looks really good, not before you take the picture, but after you take the picture, they look pretty good. If we open it here, for example, and uh, let's take a picture right here of the plant. There we go. Shutter lag is also much better than previous Samsung devices that I've used. I think that this is honestly the first camera on a Samsung phone that I can say I actually kind of like, and it has taken better pictures, even in some cases, than my 14 Pro, so that's worth noting. But you can see there, the pictures are very, very sharp. The colors aren't crazily oversaturated like they have been in previous devices that I've used. And I just really like the pictures coming out of this. I think they're very, very good. They feel almost like flagship level. Some of the video features are a little bit lacking, but that's kind of the case with a lot of Android devices in comparison to iOS devices. But I tried it out and I set it up in the pro camera mode here. Uh, where is this? You basically go to pro video actually, and you can set up basically all the features and everything. And you can kind of fine tune this to look more like a filmic camera if that's what you're interested in. If you want to film some stuff for a TikTok or anything like that, and you want to change the white balance exposure, stuff like that, you can do that in there and it'll make the footage look a lot better. My camera just died, which is fantastic. So we got to change the battery here. So yeah, I really do like this form factor with the camera. It just feels really cool. You can even hold it like a camcorder. There's a lot of little things that just make this device really fun and enjoyable to own and have and, and take with you. There's also a cool feature where if we go back here to the normal camera, we can turn on the cover screen. And so here now people can see themselves when you're taking a picture of them. So they can smile or not. And you can kind of see it right there. I can see you and take a picture of you while you can see yourself. And that's really great. So here I'll just take a picture so we can look at it here. And there you go. And you can see it has really good kind of um, depth of field. Like things look sharp, things look really nice. I really, really like this. It just works really, really well. Night mode, not gonna be the best thing, but again, it's the night and how many pictures are you gonna take at night? Really depends on you if that's the case and you might wanna go some, for some of the actual flagship devices. Cause I mean, as far as specs go, this has eight gigabytes of RAM, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile, which is um, pretty new actually. I mean, basically flagship at this point. So this phone is very impressive. I guess the only thing it's going to be quite limited by thermals. This is a very thin device. When you actually open it, it is thinner than most flagships out there. Actually, like right there's a 14 pro. You can see that. And it is very, very slim and really nice to hold in the hand. Now I will say that it is better to hold this one than it is the other colors, just because this one has these matted out aluminum sides and the colors that aren't exclusive to samsung.com, they are gonna be glossy. And while they are grippier, I think that it feels so much cheaper than this kind of aluminum, cold finish, cold touch to it. This just feels fantastic, as well as this stunning gray color. I highly recommend this color. You can see the always on display right there, so you can keep the phone open on your desk if that's what you so please, or you can keep it closed like that and the always on display will turn on there. 
One of the weird things that I noticed is that the clock, you can see that it's there, but if I double tap, it shifts back to center and that just frustrates me a little bit. It's one of those touches where I'm like, eh, you could probably fix that. I just don't like that it moves. Aside from that, you do have, of course, wireless charging and wireless power chair. Um, the camera is 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and up to 10 times digital zoom. Fingerprint sensor here on the right hand side, which is fast and snappy. So here, let's go again so you can see it. We'll just click it and tap it, and now I can swipe to open. And so it works very, very fast. I do have smart lock on, so it's not really locking here in the house, but uh, it works incredibly well, and it's positioned very nicely where even when it's closed, your thumb kind of just falls into it. So it's really, really good. Phone starts at 256 gigabyte at that thousand mark, and then you can get a 512 gigabyte, which is really good. So you are getting better storage than some other flagships out there. It's still starting at 128 gigabytes of storage. Like I'm gonna be straight up, this is not worth the full $1,000. I would not buy it for that unless you love the fun factor. I would buy it only if you get a really good trade-in deal or a good discount on it through your carrier or Samsung or whatever. Just because while it's very refined in its fifth generation at this point, and it's way better than something like the uh, Motorola Razr. I think that I, I tried that one, the video, never finished it. Couldn't care less for that phone. I thought Motorola did just a pretty bad job with the camera and with the overall device and the cover screen. I just disliked the whole phone. I think this is definitely more worth bang for your buck kind of in general. And it's more of a flagship device. Gaming on it is great. Even hardcore games like Call of Duty run very smoothly and really good on this. So overall, I can just straight up say it's a really good phone. That's not gonna be an issue. It's more like, do you want to commit to this form factor? And if you do, then I think this is the way to go for now. I think it's a very solid phone. Samsung did a great job. The hinge feels very solid and it feels nice when you close it, when you open it. You can flick it open if you want. It's a little bit of a commitment. You kind of have to force it open and that's something that's gonna take some time, or even if you ever wanna do it, because you do have to make sure you're grabbing this thing very hard so that you don't mess up and swing it or um, launch it across a table or something. My only negative, personally, is that it's not dustproof, so it's water resistant, but it's not dustproof. And most flagships are dustproof at this point, which is nice because I personally do go rock climbing a lot, and so I have a lot of chalk on my hands at all points, and so, with my iPhone, I don't have to ever worry about filming anything with hands full of chalk or anything or tossing it by a chalk bag. But with this one, I definitely would have to worry about it. And I think that's a huge miss, especially because Motorola's is dust resistant. Neither is the Galaxy Z Fold 5. So Samsung just kind of omitted that completely. And I think that's really necessary nowadays. This also applies if you go to the beach or something. You gotta watch out with the phone because of the sand. So. Keep those two things in mind. For me, those are kind of deal breakers if you have to worry about the phone so much. In the same way how a couple years ago, these weren't water resistant and that sucked. But visually, physically, this phone runs great. The software works good enough. I think it could be better. I think the Z Fold 5 has slightly better software optimized for its own thing of what it is. This one still has a way to go. I think the cover screen could be more useful. Um, some more things, there's there's features in there, but I don't really care for them. I do like split screen, you can split them in half, but of course that's with any Android device. And yeah, I think overall, really good phone. I'm impressed. Would I upgrade to this or keep this? I don't think so. I think for me, I do need the dust resistance and I do need Samsung to work on the UI just a bit more. But I think the camera is finally there. The build quality is there. This color is there. And so if you're interested in it, I think it's a really great purchase. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.